Hello, uh, I'm Russell Redman, Senior Editor at Supermarket News. And with me today is uh, Scott Mushkin, CEO at R5 Capital and a participant in the 2020 Supermarket News Analyst Roundtable. Uh, well, in the first two parts of the roundtable, uh, SN editors and analysts discussed the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the grocery industry. First, we looked at the industry's response to the pandemic, and then we kind of discussed the changes uh, that are likely going forward. So now, uh, in some video interviews, we're asking the roundtable analysts for their predictions. So Scott, um, based on what we've seen so far this year during the COVID-19 pandemic, which grocery retail companies or industry segments do you see as well positioned as we hopefully approach the post-pandemic period? I mean, I think the companies that are best positioned actually are the traditional grocery stores. Mm -hmm. um, they came into the pandemic probably in the worst position. Um, and anyone that's been following our research or reading supermarket news probably knows we were not the biggest fans of the industry uh, <laughs> going into the pandemic. So that's, uh, you know, that's shortchanging ourselves and probably even worse than that. But I think the, the big change for us, and it's a, it's a sea change, is that the, we think the industry comes out much, much better off than it went in. Um, and I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing. And, and by the way, no one's expecting this. You can't get any investors that we, we deal with to, um, to kind of get the, their arms around this. Mm -hmm. Do you see any, see any particular companies uh, standing out as uh, big beneficiaries of this increase in demand? And I mean, I think, you know, the, the, we always call them the big uglies, and I'm, I'm <laughs> offending people saying that, but like the Kroger's, the, uh, the Albertsons, the Ahold, uh, you know, we think, and we're just running through some numbers, and the numbers are, are pretty unbelievable. If you think we exit the pandemic with one extra food at home occasion, and the average household spends, I don't know, 8 to $10 per meal at home. Mm -hmm. uh, 130, million house, 130 million households in the U.S., you start, you know, you know, $10 per week. Like, you start getting some pretty big numbers that mm -hmm. will flow to a company like Kroger and Albertsons. And it just suggests they're going to they're gonna exit the pandemic. Even, I know the big fear for everybody is that the competition ramps up and but right. even if you think that the margins are not great, the bottom line is you're going to be exiting with a lot more embedded EBIT than you were. And mm -hmm. then the big, other big fear is cycling and, you know, cycling the big volumes and the great study out of uh, ERS, um, part of the government, talking about what happened in the last recession. And so if our forecasts are anywhere near correct, where we're going to have falling mm -hmm. incomes next year as we cycle over the stimulus, that would argue that you know more households are going to want to be eating at home to save the money than going, right. going back to the restaurants. So I know probably people watching this podcast or you know reading your your news would probably maybe fall off their chair, but we are about <laughs> as bullish as we've ever been on the food at home industry, but particularly these big large supermarket companies, traditional supermarket companies. Mm -hmm. Do you see any companies or industry segments that might be challenged, uh, maybe going into two, 2021? I mean, challenge is not a word I would probably use, but I think we're all accustomed to the discounters really mm -hmm. doing much better than the traditional grocery stores. And I'm not saying the discounters are going to do bad, like a Walmart or an Aldi. All I would say is that there are there are hints in our data, you know, the, the value of a one-stop shop, the value of a one-stop shop close to home, um, that the, tr the, the consumer, particularly the consumer under 40, is kind of either rediscovered or discovered the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we may see, especially if there's limited amount, if there's still, you know, some services that are not back to normal, like travel, mm -hmm. uh, eating out, you, you, you could see that even though we're in a recession, the traditional supermarket industry, even into next year, outperforming the discounters, very, you know, I mean, again, if you almost have to stand yourself on your head to actually believe some of this stuff, but <laughs> you may see like a Kroger and Albertsons continue to outperform someone like a Walmart. So don't think they're actually a loser per se, if it were right, but I think what you'd see is the, you know, the, the incremental performance or the better performance will be stronger with the grocers. Mm -hmm. 
Not as big of a winner. These are like... not as big as a winner. Yeah, <laughs> which is you know, which is unbelievable because they've been taking share for a long time. And uh, for my last question, uh, at some point, we're going to see an economic recovery. Um, how do you expect uh, this to impact the grocery retail sector since they've uh, had such a big uh, boost? Yeah, I mean, you know, touching on, it's a great question we get all the time, uh, but touching on what, what I said before, if we have more food at home occasions, um, people are working from home more, um, there's less restaurants, the cost of a restaurant mm -hmm. meal is higher. Um, in an economic recovery, you know, you will, again, return to probably eating out more, you, you'll get that. But if you are at home more, which I don't know how it's not going to happen, you saw, you know, you know, mm -hmm. announcements out of Microsoft, you've seen announcements out of a, a whole slew of companies that, yeah, we're not going to be all working at home all the time, but there's going to be some kind of rotation probably permanently. It would argue an economic um, uh, improvement would actually not be as detrimental to the industry and it actually might be a positive as people mm -hmm. trade up because they have extra money. This is potentially the pandemic could end what has been a 20 year malaise in the traditional grocery business, particularly in the last decade. Mm -hmm. It's been a tough decade. Um, no inflation, you know, no volume growth, you know, you know, other people taking share. So we come out with a better economy and more food at home occasions with higher inflation. That bodes really well for the sector and it's something we haven't seen in, like I said, a couple decades. Hey, Scott. Well, that's all the questions I have. Thanks very much for taking part. I know you're uh, really busy. <laughs> no, no, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Always enjoy these.